Hey everyone, this will not just be a regular fan fiction, but a very factual one, confirmed by a passage from the book, The Rise of Darth Vader. As in the book, Vader thinks to himself about the very what-if scenario regarding this question, and the events that would have changed if it took place. I've done many videos regarding the passages from the book, however, I'll quote a particular one here from Vader's thoughts in the third person for our premise in this video. And yet, if the High Council had seen fit to recognize his power, had granted him the status of master, perhaps he could have abided by their continued existence. But to call him the chosen one only to hold him back, to lie to him and expect him to lie for them, what had they imagined the outcome would be? Old fools. Right here, we can clearly see that it is very much true that if Anakin was indeed granted the rank of master as he had expected, then things would have been very different in the end. He felt insulted that they referred to him as the chosen one, yet denied him the same rank as the masters on the council who were much weaker and less talented than he was. Apart from the shot to his ego, a large reason he wanted to become a master was to be granted further access into the Jedi archives, particularly the Sith archives that resided locked only for the masters on the council and select masters at that. Let's begin our fanfiction today, just after this scene that I've edited here. Enjoy. Disturbing is this move by Chancellor Palpatine. I understand. You are on this council. We'd grant you the rank of master. After this, Anakin would be extremely elated. Obi-Wan would ask him to spy on the Chancellor and Anakin, now having his trust fully regained in the Council's sound decisions to make him a master, he would oblige and do his duty, leading the story to this scene right here. Uncertain death. What did you say? Use my knowledge, I beg you. You're the Sith Lord. I'm going to turn you over to the Jedi Council. After this, Anakin would go to Master Windu just as he had done originally. However, the conflict within him would be much less. Now trusting Windu completely and respecting his wisdom, he would ask him one last thing before he left. He would inquire about the ability to save those he loved from dying. Windu would tell him that it is not the Jedi way to control life. However, Master Yoda has been studying hard on his communications with Qui-Gon Jinn from the other realm. Yoda. Oh, Master Yoda. Spoke with Master Qui-Gon Jinn on Mortis, did you not? Uh, yes. Now, in the Clone Wars, Anakin did come across Yoda, who was speaking to Qui-Gon, and also spoke to his Force Ghost on Mortis. So he knew this was a possibility, and if anyone could help him, it would be his original Master, who wasn't so straight-edged as the Council was. Master Windu would tell Anakin to wait for Master Yoda to return from Kashyyyk in order to learn Qui-Gon's secrets, and perhaps, even speak with him through the Force. Until then, he should remain in the Council Chambers until his dealings with Palpatine were over, assuring him if what he had just told him was true, then he would have solidified his trust and he would show Skywalker all the scrolls in the restricted section of the archives as well. At ease, Anakin would end up in the scene here. However, regardless of how happy he was with the Council and his new rank, he would still be immensely conflicted with the thoughts of Padme. Wondering if he would fail her just like he did his mother, his impatience and fear got the best of him. Rushing to see what had happened between Palpatine and Mace, we now arrive at this scene here. You are under arrest, my lord. I am going to end this once and for all. You can't. Where Anakin would tell Mace that he needs him. Mace would then understand why he needed him in the first place. Assuming Palpatine promised him some sort of Sith ability to cheat death, he would look at Anakin and tell him if the Sith discovered a way to cheat death, he could be sure that Yoda, with all his years, had discovered something about it too, reminding him of their deal regarding the scrolls and holocrons down below. He would then tell Anakin how Palpatine would just cause more trouble, and that he was the one behind the attacks on the Queen, and the reason for Qui-Gon's death at the hands of his apprentice. Remembering all of this, feeling like a fool, Anakin would step back as he looked at Palpatine in hatred. After all, he was a master now. He had to work together with the Jedi to bring peace, freedom, justice, and security to the Republic. 
With one swift swing, Mace would slash right through top of his skull, splitting him in two as the right half of his body slowly draped and fell out of the window to the speeders below. Turning off his lightsaber, Windu put his hand on Skywalker's shoulder, telling him he had done well and that he could sense the conflict within him. However, it was his decision and action to trust in his elders that had proved Mace right to grant him the rank of master. Anakin would speak with Yoda where he would learn to communicate with Qui-Gon, telling him about the relationship with Padme in confidence and asking him what he should do. Qui-Gon would tell him to trust in the Force instead of using it for his purposes, to search his feelings and to always be mindful. He said, Anakin, a Sith Lord as powerful as Palpatine could very well have manipulated your dreams and nightmares. You must defer what is reality and what are mere fears. Trust in the Force, Anakin. He would continue to tell Anakin to trust in the Force and to calm his mind, as when fear and desperation are present, his clarity is altered heavily. As Mace promised, Anakin would study all scripture and lore from the Council's restricted archives, becoming very knowledgeable in all aspects of the Force, and furthering his abilities as a master on the Council. Padme would give a healthy birth to Luke and Leia, where the Council would become aware of this news as well as Anakin and Padme's marriage. They would attend together to agree to train Skywalker's children as they were projected to be the most powerful beings in the galaxy if trained directly under Yoda, Mace, Obi-Wan, and Anakin, growing as teenagers to surpass even some of the masters on the council just as Windu had done in his youthful years at the academy. Order 66 would never have happened. All Jedi would continue to further their knowledge of the Force, communicating with Qui-Gon Jinn and learning how to transcend their consciousness to the other world. All would be quiet and peaceful in the galaxy until, that is, a new threat would rise from the shadows to show the Jedi the true power of the dark side. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this fanfiction. I think these events would have happened, and I tried to do this one as close to canon as I could without any exciting spin-offs like I usually do, such as returning Darth Maul or Anakin falling to the dark side again and becoming Vader. This is much more of a predictable of a timeline, and it doesn't allow for too much to be built off from it like we have in the original series. However, it would make for an interesting story once the new threat arrives, seeing all the Jedi team together to bring down the new Sith. I wonder who that could be. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you all have a great day or night wherever you are watching this in the galaxy. If you enjoyed it, please be so kind as to leave a thumbs up to support the channel. And I'll see you all in tomorrow's episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always. Fulfill your destiny.